Welcome to the service for the fifth weekend in Easter, or May 10th, which is also Mother's Day. The theme for the weekend is that the joy and peace of Easter continues as God's people, that's spoken of in the second lesson of the day, the chosen people, the royal priesthood, uh, the people belonging to God. The joy and peace of Easter continues as those people continue to tell the news of Christ, who is, as we have in the gospel today, the way and the truth and the life. We worship today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn of the day for this weekend in the hymnal is hymn 141. We will sing the first four stanzas. This weekend and the two weekends following this are still Sundays in the Easter season throughout the church year. And these last three weekends have as the gospel lessons uh, words Jesus shared with his disciples on Monday, Thursday. So John 14, 15, 16, and 17 are, are all sections, parts of sections we will be reading the next three weeks. And this weekend the gospel includes sections from John 14 verses 1 through 6. Uh, the, in this section, Jesus is reminding his disciples that we need a good shepherd all the time. That was the theme of last week's lesson, Good Shepherd Sunday, how not just the little children need Jesus as their shepherd, everybody does. With this weekend also including a celebration of Mother's Day, you kind of, you, you try to think of, what am I going to thank mom for today? And you have a really long list, if you're going to be honest. She did many, many things, and it wasn't just the fourth Sunday of Easter, was it? Good Shepherd Sunday is that Sunday in Easter, but he is the Good Shepherd throughout our lifetime, just as mom is your mom, not just on that second Sunday in May. So maybe we could say thank you to her a little bit more often than just one day out of the calendar year. But also, also something that we do not grow out of at the older we get. You know, I haven't lived with my parents for many, many, many years. That doesn't mean I still don't have a mom. She, she doesn't do things for me every day the way she used to when I was little, but we still have that mother and we're still taking the time to remember that, to thank them for that as we can. And as, as that mom is mom throughout life, the Good Shepherd is our shepherd throughout life. That's something that we do not grow out of. And that's what Jesus wants to assure his disciples of before his suffering, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. He's done all of that. And a little over a month ago, we did celebrate Easter. It was done a little bit differently than we normally do, but it was still Easter because Easter is 
the one who was crucified and buried is now risen. And that's our celebration, no matter how it is, that we were able to celebrate it. By the time we get to this weekend in the church here, there is a little bit of a shift in the themes of the readings that the church that has been comforted, all the believers who have been, been encouraged by all those appearances over 40 days that the Savior really was alive, now it was time to not stay hidden and, and by, by being afraid, hiding behind locked doors. Now is the time to go. Now is the time to go and tell. But if they were going to go do that work differently than they're used to doing. They were used to, the disciples in particular, they were used to being with Jesus just about every day. He sent them on a couple of little missionary trips throughout those three years <coughs> that he served publicly. But basically, they were with Jesus every day. And now he's going to say, time to go, time to tell, and I'm not visibly going to be with you. And that's probably going to scare the apostles just as it scares us. Even though the children look forward to being dependent and moving out of the house, it's still a little bit scary when you move out of the house. Again, connecting to Mother's Day. She's used to doing all this for me, and she's doing it because she loves you. And so she's taking care of you as best she can because you are a very dear, treasured blessing to her from God. But she will not be with you every minute of every day. You will now be going out. Lots of talk in our country now about how do we reopen? How do we get back to normal? How do we try to do some of the things that we're used to doing? And after being secluded for so long and isolated and distanced from people for so long, it's going to be a little bit different. And that can be scary. Lots of things every day will keep us afraid. And yet what Jesus says here, don't let your hearts be troubled. Be at peace. The same words we heard over and over again on Easter Sunday. Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. That joy, that peace of Easter continues in a very, very uncertain and a very, very un changing world. Our Savior doesn't change. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. The world and ourselves are saying, this is the perfect time to be afraid. If we're not afraid now, when are you ever going to be? And how can even Jesus say, don't be afraid? In just a few short hours, what's going to happen to him? All the disciples are going to flee. They're all going to abandon him. Peter's going to deny him. Judas is going to betray him. He'll go through the trial and all the beatings and all the mockery. And he'll go through the crucifixion. He'll suffer hell itself for all sinners. And he'll die. If now is not the time to panic, I don't know when the time to panic would be. But that's what Jesus says. How can we not panic? He says, trust God. All those things happen to Jesus. Betrayed, denied, rejected, crucified, buried. And that wasn't the end of the list, was it? Then on the third day, he rose again and now lives and reigns for all eternity. That's the one in whom we trust. That's the reason we can say, don't let your hearts be troubled. It is completely beyond our control, but it is not beyond our God's. The world says, now is the time to be afraid. Things are really going to change. And Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to be going away from you for a little while, but I'm going to prepare a place and a room for you. I'm sure to the Jews who are very, very familiar with their history and their ancestry. They're very familiar with the 40 years of wandering in the desert where nobody had a room. <laughs> you had a tent. Some of them might have even slept outside. I don't know. I'm not that old enough to be there when they were wandering in the desert for 40 years. But to say, I have a room. Even if it's just your dorm room when you're away at college, it's your room and it's a permanent place. <laughs> you don't have to wander around the campus every day trying to figure out where you're going to stay. This is my room. And where is this lasting, permanent residence, which is ours? It's in our Father's house, prepared by the Good Shepherd himself. This is going to be a good place to go. On Mother's Day, Father's Day, holidays throughout the year, we want to be home. We want to be with those we love the most. And now let me ask you, after quarantine for a little over a month, how many of you are hoping to be outside? And how many parents are ready to send the kids back to school and all those kinds of things. We can kind of make a joke about that. It's never going to happen with heaven. We will be home with the Father. 
with the Good Shepherd, with all those sheep he has won for himself. We're never going to want to leave that place, and we won't have to. That is our permanent dwelling. Jesus says that we can be sure of that because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who is the way to have lots of people coming up with their ideas. Talked about that a little bit with last week's message about all these false ideas about, about how to be right with God and morality and all these things that, that please us but don't really please God. You've got to listen to the shepherd's voice. Think Jesus is God's Messiah, set apart and anointed as God's Christ, that the Father himself sent Jesus to do this work. We're familiar with the idea of a one-way street. You can only go that way. Well, we actually have one just up the street here, up by the nursing home. And it says one way. Honestly, can you go the wrong way down that one-way street and still get where you want to go? <laughs> well, you can, I suppose. It's not legal, and you're not really supposed to get there that way. Who wants to be right with God? Who wants to be in this room, in the Father's house, prepared by the shepherd? There's one way. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus, the one way. We can't really take a shortcut on that. Jesus says he is the truth. With all the voices that you hear every day, all the sounds you hear every day, who you pay attention to on Twitter and in the news and everything else, we probably can connect this again to Mother's Day and say, I'm going to listen to Mom. <laughs> or I'll listen to Dad. Somebody who has given me absolutely no reason to doubt them. I can trust them fully. I might not know how they're going to do what they say they're going to do, but I'm going to trust them. Jesus says, I am the truth. When we wonder who to trust, we have no worries with God. Jesus says to the Father later on in these readings from, from Monday, Thursday, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. With all those sounds and all those voices, the sheep recognize the shepherd's voice listening to him. He tells us the truth. He'll lay down his life for us. We don't have to. We couldn't. He'll prepare the place in heaven and take us to be with him. That's the truth which the only the shepherd can say. And he says he is the life. He really was dead and he really is alive. That message never loses its power. Can't. How, does, how could that message ever lose... Death is basically that last enemy to be destroyed, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians. And that's been destroyed. So we really have, as Jesus says at the beginning, no reason to fear. There are all kinds of things the devil will bring into our lives that can't stop the Easter joy. Our Good Shepherd continues that forever. Because he is the one who's defeated death. Who else can? What else can defeat death? We can wear a mask. From now until Judgment Day, that won't get us into heaven. The shepherd, who is the way, truth, and life, gets us to heaven. Don't let your hearts be troubled. As we find those in this world we trust and depend on and rely on and listen to, the Good Shepherd continues today doing that work for you and me. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is God's word. We pray. Oh God, you form the mind of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we offer a prayer on behalf of mothers this Mother's Day weekend and also pray the Lord's Prayer, <clears throat> we'll make confession of our sins and hear of our Savior's forgiveness. We pray. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. 
for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me from your presence forever. I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake alone. Amen. Christ has died, is risen, and will come again. In his great mercy, God has made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Therefore, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the Lord's Prayer, we offer a prayer that, uh, for God's blessing on all mothers this Mother's Day weekend. Heavenly Father, you are the source of life, wisdom, and all good things. Look with favor on all mothers who have given life to their children and who nurture them with loving concern and faithful instruction. May their children honor them and call them blessed. When they become weary, sustain them with physical and spiritual rest. Hear us. For the sake of your son, Jesus, who cared for his earthly mother and in whom you are well pleased. And hear us as we join together wherever we are, praying the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, give you calm and quiet hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We conclude our devotional service this week singing the four stanzas of hymn 356. Thank you. 